Yes, good morning. It is 30 minutes past the hour, and we are here in New York City, and my brother Fred Imus is here. <laughs> How is the dog, Charles? The dog is fine, thank you very much. Uh, you showing the dog? Uh, a couple of weeks. We're talking we about uh, the show. Charles's dog, Ozzy, mm -hmm. which is a, what kind of dog is it? Boston Terrier. Yeah. It's not a dog, it's a rat. It's not a rat. It well, is a very fine little and, dog. And then Charles, and Charles bought it from some yuppie breeder. Not a yuppie breeder. And as part of the conditions for being allowed to buy the dog, mm -hmm. they had to agree to show it, Fred. That's a, that happens a lot when yeah. you buy, sh buy dogs like that. Yeah. No, yeah. Fred, that's not what you're supposed to say. So, so my brother and I <laughs> went to the Vietnam Memorial yesterday after right. we signed a thousand books in D.C. Mm -hmm. And my brother was in the 101st Airborne, and so he bought an Airborne pen. There was no pen there that I could buy that I would be entitled to wear. I was in the Marine Corps, but I didn't even qualify with my rifle. I may be the only person ever in the Marine Corps who couldn't qualify with a rifle. I mean, that's embarrassing. So it? you yeah. have nothing no, I've that not, you could... <laughs> I have nothing that I could buy to wear. I, got, I, got, I, I never got any kind of commendation. I got nothing. I couldn't qualify with my rifle, and I got no nothing. I got an honorable discharge. That's all I got. Well, that's good. I made PFC, but they, everybody makes PFC, right? Mm -hmm. They need more. I made it, and then they took it away from me. They did? When I went on leave and didn't come back <laughs> for a while. My brother was stationed in Wiesbaden, <laughs> West Germany. Fred was in Wiesbaden, West Germany, and went to Barcelona, Spain, and stayed there a month, right? No, I was actually in Copenhagen. I stayed six weeks. <laughs> it's a nice place, though. On a two-week leave. Yeah. You mean a nice fellow? Well, I got out of that deal. Never got in any trouble <laughs> over that. I'll be darned. So, I was just one of them kind of guys that just kind of skates through everything, you know? Yeah. When you got back, <laughs> what did they say? Well, they had a they, they had a formation in the morning. You know how the formations in the... Mm -hmm. in the um, and the first sergeant comes out there and reads the names of the people who have to see the company commander. They read my name off, but between the time I was supposed to see him, this uh, captain I used to drive for, this special forces guy, well, he come got me to drive for him for a couple of weeks. I got back, they forgot all about it. <laughs> <laughs> Skating <Okay>. through. <laughs> so, uh, um... All of us at the bookstore and the Trover Bookshop at the, next to the Library of Congress, next to the Library of Congress yesterday, had to watch my brother uh, while people stand in line, waiting for to have their book signed. Watch my brother eat a banana split, which is not a pleasant sight. Oh God, and I couldn't eat at all. He'd give me the bum for us. You know? <laughs> what do you think the deal is with Carville? I don't know, but I'm I'm willing to pay for some clothes for him that fit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're, they're I mean, he's a Seems like a pleasant fellow. Well, well he's he a great guy. Terrific. But I mean, uh, but that doesn't mean that he has to wear clothes that are two sizes too no. small. No, I don't know. Well, I don't know. It's just, I mean, it's like it's like hand-me-downs from somebody. Yep. is what he got, and it didn't quite fit. You yep. know. James Carville shows up yesterday with David Rosenthal from Villard, our publisher, and his <laughs> publisher. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was he had a suit and he had a sport jacket and tie on, but it looked like. It stretches on him. It I mean, it's like pulled across. I know exactly well, it, what it, it looks like. The arm, the, the sleeves came too you know, short. Yeah. Yeah. You could see about three inches of his <laughs> wrist. <laughs> and then stretch pants on, you know, like women wear. Yeah. And the guy, you know, he makes a lot of money. I, I don't know. Who can? Doesn't marry. When, when he leaves the house, doesn't she take a look at him and say, "Well, you know, you know he'd look at you." I mean, you're a mess. <laughs> but, it's apparently, but it's apparently not the case, right? I don't think so. Couldn't be. Uh, should we do spots before this, or are uh, we... Too late now. It's too late now. Yeah. So we're just kind of, we're hosed here. Fred and I will be over in Manhattan today at uh, Barnes & Noble on 5th Avenue at 48th Street at noon, signing copies of Two Guys, uh, Four Corners, which is uh, surprisingly, to some being, well, not surprising to me, but this is from the, this is kind of, well, this is kind of actually good news from the, uh, from the Albuquerque Journal from a paper in that area. Mm -hmm. Two Guys, Four Corners is a spectacular collection of color photographs taken in New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and Utah. The scenic vistas, detailed close-ups, and historic places are accompanied by funny, if not necessarily profane, photo captions. What? Stunning. Spe stunning. And, uh, spectacular. Spe yeah, the two from folks out in Albuquerque. Yeah. I'm very pleased. Well, you can pick up a copy of Two Guys, Four Corners at your local bookstore, and you can buy a copy at Barnes & Noble today, and Fred and I will sign it for you. It's 21 until the hour. One, two, three. I'm a in the morning.